Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. It's time to get the scoop with Sarah. Hello, my name is Neil Bledsoe. I am an actor and a writer. I was born in Toronto, but I grew up in Seattle and I split my time between New York and Los Angeles. Uh, I've been an actor for about 15 years after I went to theater school. Uh, I've done plays, I've been a Tiffany's model. I was an Old Spice man once. I've been in independent films that no one's ever seen. I've been in really bad films that no one's ever seen and let's keep it that way. Uh, and I've been in really good films like these on Hallmark that I hope everyone will see. Uh, I also write for Sports Illustrated, uh, which I've done since uh, 2014. And uh, my favorite place to be on earth is probably uh, in Africa. Uh, my newest film for Hallmark is called A Christmas Carousel, and it is a very sweet, old-fashioned fairy tale uh, where a girl named Lila meets a boy named uh, Prince Whitaker, and um, Lila uh, restores carousels with her father, and she is hired by the royal family of Ancadia, which I kind of spearhead, to restore the royal carousel, which her grandfather had built. She is sort of looking for a bit of inspiration in her life and uh, I provide a necessary spark for um, to have her reach for her dreams. Now where she comes into my life is is helping me realize my fullest self and that I don't have to be a stuffy old king if I don't want to and uh, I can be both myself and who I have to be in the world. And uh, eventually, as, as things happen, we may or may not fall in love, but you'll just have to wait and see. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil that for you. But my preparation for Prince Whitaker, uh, my real preparation was, uh, was a lot of fun actually, uh, because I was playing a, a British prince and uh, I spent a lot of weeks um, working with an accent coach. This is great um, accent coach that I've worked with before named Tim Monick. And um, it was from that place of language that I really started to develop a lot of the character. Um, I, you know, the first thing that jumped out at me when I read the script is it felt like a Hugh Grant character. And so uh, even as Tim and I were kind of looking at some accent models, like of course, Prince Harry or Eddie Redmayne or uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. I kept gravitating towards Hugh Grant just because I, I love him. And he's like, he's such a curmudgeon at some places, but he's got, I think the thing I love most about watching him is he's got this undeniable sense of fun behind his eyes. And that was something that I really wanted to capture with, uh, with his character as well. And hopefully I did. I kind of think of myself as a, as a cross between Hugh Grant, Jude Law, Daniel Day-Lewis, and David Hasselhoff. Well, I was very excited, both because she's uh, such a legend around the, the halls of Hallmark, but also that we had a lot of mutual friends in common. So I was able to uh, get the skinny and go like, hey, I'm working with Rachel. Um, and everybody had such lovely things to say about her and uh, had known her for such a long time. And she had also worked on American Dreams with a uh, with a, an actor who was on that. It was a director of a, one of the first TV shows that I ever did. Uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was a show called Six Degrees, and and uh, so we had that connection there. And then we met in the airport um, on the way to um, on our way to Canada to quarantine for fourteen days together. And we both had to quarantine. We were in separate places, obviously, but we were both kind of like in it together. Um, Rachel and I were, uh, yeah, we were both kind of uh, at the airport and then we had to quarantine together for 14 days. And what that allowed us to do was to, um, uh, was to really rehearse as, uh, and get to know each other in this professional way 
uh, that we'd spend about five hours a day on the phone going over the script and talking about it, reading literally every character in the script, uh, doing speed throughs and making notes. And so when it came time to make the movie, we already had this, uh, this pretty established relationship and a really, really great working relationship. And then on set, she's just effervescent. How can you not fall in love with her and, and smile when you're with her? And um, I think in, in so many ways, I think that's my performance was really easy because all I had to do is watch her and fall in love. Well, my favorite scene to film with her and my favorite scene are different, but my favorite scene to film with her was probably um, the one where she comes back. Uh, they're both in the in the the kind of the throne room scenes. The 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 one where you know, spoiler alert. She, um, I guess, the scene where you could say it all works out is um, is it's just such an elegant way and and such a a beautiful ending to this to the story between these two. And just in the the darkest hour when you know everything looks like it's it's beyond hope. Um, Hope returns and it's it's lovely and both she and I had such a, a close bond in shooting that and it was a really tender scene between the two of us and I felt so connected to her and uh, I hope she felt the same. So that was my favorite scene to shoot with her but my favorite scene overall was, uh, was a scene that uh, was the first time that she sees that I'm the prince and uh, I had I, I really fell in love with this idea because everyone talks about how I'm always late and uh, how I don't take things seriously. So I, I just thought it would be a hoot if I literally like am running in late after, you know, after they were, uh, after I was introduced. But, and then Hallmark loved it, the director loved it, the writer loved it, and the, the changes made in the script. However, what I did not see was how vast that throne room was going to be. I thought it would be like a little thing. Like I, I'd come in and I'd just kind of pop in right behind the throne and that would be it. What I did not see is that I had to run across an entire room, maybe 50 yards. And that's okay if you do it once. But if you do it five, 10, 15 times in a prince costume, no less, it gets a bit tiring. But um, it was fun. It was, it, was, it was interesting. Um, I'm a very long person. Uh, I've got, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of built like a, like a daddy long leg spider. You know, I just got very long limbs. And so when the coat first came in, the, the arms were nowhere near long. It, it felt very regal. Um, that said, I had to, every time I did get dressed in that, in the Prince costume like that, I had to literally be like fastened into it, like a, like a knight with a squire and the, uh, our, our Scott, our costumes guy would come up and he'd like fasten all the buckles and all the, the pins and things like that. And so there's such a, I found that tremendously helpful though, because there's such a, you know, that that would have to happen in real life too. It's like, you know, it's not like throwing on a pair of sweatpants and a, and a you know, a, a fleece or something. There's a, there's a ceremony to it. You know, you put on these pants, you put on this shirt and every single composed layer starts to help you feel like the prince, starts to help you feel like royalty. It helps you feel the ceremony of it. So that I, I found to be really helpful. You know, that was, that was also something that was really helpful. So we shot in North Bay, Ontario, you know, in, in some ways, North Bay, Ontario and the fictional kingdom of Ancadia couldn't be more different, right? One is allegedly in Europe. We don't really know, but we're going to say that it's in Europe somewhere. And the other is very much in, uh, in North Bay, Ontario. So North Bay, Ontario has a history of like a, a being a mining community and uh, it's fairly kind of agricultural and there's just different kind of values. So when we kind of took over the carousel, which is the, obviously like, it's kind of the pride and joy of this town. 
we would kind of put in our own images of what the pride and joy of Ancadia would be, right? Like what values they kind of had, like whether it's the, the Christmas decorations or what we kind of wanted to project. But underneath all of those were these different murals and scenes about what North Bay thought was valuable about their community. And kind of feeling that sense of pride from that gave us a, a gravity and a weight in how um, how we were able to represent it for Ancadia as well. Because you get, it just, you can feel the pride that somebody not only took to build this thing, but that also takes to maintain it. And um, the gentleman I think that, that runs it was, uh, was there every night and he would sit kind of reading, uh, reading his newspaper in the ticket booth. And it was like this old ticket booth, you know, it said like, you know, $1 for a ride, children ride free or something like that. And you get three song rides. So it, it even just looking at it is like you're, you're thrust into a time machine and going back to 1905 when it was built. Maybe I had a, um, I think my, I, I, look, I had a blast making this film and, uh, but I think my, my favorite, uh, <laughs> my favorite moments were like, were jokes that I got to pitch. Lila's father kind of, I had this one line called, is saying simply see you tomorrow, Roy. And I thought, uh, I was like, oh, this is, this is where I get to kind of, I, I, where Prince Whitaker really thinks that he's like a, he, for the first time in his life gets to be a blue collar worker and uh, looks at Roy and tries to kind of like earn his respect. And, uh, and the dad is like, ah, see you tomorrow, Whitaker. And uh, <laughs> I just tried it once and I was like, see you tomorrow, Roy. And it tickled me to death. I, <laughs> I just, I love doing that. But then, but then one of my other favorite moments was, uh, was a joke that was universally turned down, but I'll, because, because it'll never see the light of day, I'll, I'll give it to you here. This little, uh, the little girl, my, my niece, she says, Princess Maya says, you know, it's like, oh, every tradition is, is uh, Uncle Whitaker's favorite tradition. And what I wanted to say was, listen, if loving Christmas is wrong, I don't want to be right. And it, <laughs> that, that the director was just like, no. <laughs> so for good reason, but that was probably my favorite moment. You know, I, I think what I'm most excited for people to see is this tremendously beautiful ornament of a fairy tale of a film. I'm excited for them to be transported away inside of a fantasy. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to be with my family this Christmas because they're all back in Seattle. But the thing that I'm most excited about to do this Christmas is I am going to find one tradition from each of my um, from each of my ethnicities, right? So, uh, from my German side, my English side, my Dutch side, my Swedish side, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I am going to cook one dish from each of those, one traditional Christmas dish from each of those, because I love to cook. And food is, I think, such a link to our past and to our heritage. And so, that's what I want to do this Christmas. I was doing a play in Los Angeles and uh, they reached out to me with for Christmas and uh, I read it. I don't think it was the first one that they'd sent me, but um, uh, I just really loved Nina Weidman's script. Saw a, a, a good journey that I could, uh, that I could kind of an arc that I could give to Robert Marley in coming home for Christmas. And then the opportunity to work with Danica was just something that I didn't want to pass up. I mean, I, you know, like most of America, <laughs> I had a huge crush on Danica McKellar growing up. And But that said, I was also so deeply impressed by the other directions that she's gone in life, you know, from being... Um, uh, being such an advocate for mental health and being such an advocate for math and teaching and, and speaking to Congress about it and doing plays herself and writing books. I mean, she's a 
deeply, deeply, deeply impressive woman. So I, I was really excited. And that was one of my favorite things about that was uh, becoming friends with her and, uh, you know, um, when, which we continue to be till this day. Ooh, ooh. In a future Allmark movie? I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be pelted with eggs unless I say make a sequel to Rachel Boston. Um, so I'll, I'll probably have to go with that. I'll, I'll, I'll do this, I'll go top three, all right? I'm gonna go make a sequel to Rachel Boston, make a sequel with Danica McKellar, or do a brand new movie with Jessica Lowndes because she's lovely and uh, I cooked her, because we're, we're, she was shooting her uh, film up in, uh, up in North Bay as well. And I think I made her Canadian Thanksgiving. So she's a lovely lady. Actually, all right, so this, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a sequel to Coming Home for Christmas with Danica McKellar. We're gonna do sequel to A Christmas Carousel with Rachel Boston. And then Jessica Lowndes and I are gonna go to Africa together and do a Safari Christmas and, uh, and that'll be it. It'll be, yeah, celebrating on the Serengeti, we're gonna call it. Thank you for watching The Sarah Scoop Show. Head to sarahscoop.com for more.